Coal, the combustible rock which powered the Industrial Revolution, is created when dead plant matter decays and gets converted into it by a heat and pressure deep underground over millions of years. Coal was either extracted by underground or surface mines in America. Many mines of both types sprung up to fuel this growing industry from Pennsylvania to Wyoming to Utah. When a mine is made, a coal town is usually developed to provide miners a place to live relatively close. This brings us to Centralia in 1865, located in Pennsylvania. This story begins when Centralia's land was bought by a coal company because they found coal deposits located underneath it. Hey everyone. Mining on Centralia's land began in 1856, when the Locust Run and Coal Ridge Mines opened there. And eventually, the town was incorporated as a borough in 1866 by the anthracite coal industry. Anthracite coal has the highest carbon content and highest energy density of all types of coals. 1,300 people lived there at this time and would continue to grow as the coal industry fueled this growing town, but would peak at 2,761 in 1890. The reason why it will peak there is because around the 1900s, coal production would go on a decline in Pennsylvania and Centralia would follow this trend. New sources of energy such as oil and natural gas would be discovered, which will eventually compete with the production of coal. Production would decline further during World War I, when many young miners would be enlisted in the military and then the Great Depression began in 1929. Mines in Centralia would close and some miners would just take whatever coal they could find because the economy in Centralia was on a decline. They'd resort to pillar robbing, which involved removing coal from the pillars, but as they did that, the mine roof would become unstable, making it likely to cave in. There would be a moment when production would go up a bit, and that would be during World War II but nothing could reverse the overall downward trend in Centralia. Despite this, mining in Centralia would continue until the 1960s, even when most of the companies there would shut down. <laughs> Very tenacious. On a certain day, a plan to get rid of landfill would make Centralia a dangerous place to live in. On May 27th, 1962, firefighters would set the dump on fire and let it burn for a while. The landfill was located in an abandoned mine pit, which was done to get rid of the bad smell and unwanted pests. However, two days later, fires were spotted and quickly extinguished. Was this a prank? Was someone starting these fires? More fires would start over the next days, turning into weeks, until firefighters discovered an unsealed opening entering the underground labyrinth of abandoned coal mines. The fire seemed to have entered that hole when the landfill was burned, and the remaining coal deposits there was fueling this underground fire. There are other sources that say that the fire could have been started by a trash hauler which dumped hot ash or coal into an open pit the day before, but either way, a fire made its way into the coal mines underground. Immediately, attempts were made to stop the fire, pumping water into it and cutting off the fire's access to oxygen by closing all of the entrances with clay, but that didn't work. Eventually, residents could see and smell smoke coming from underground, and this posed another problem because some of this had dangerous levels of carbon monoxide. Remember the previously mentioned pillar robbing? Well, with the fires going on, mine roofs would collapse in certain areas, exposing Centralia to the underground fire. There were attempts to get ambitious in stopping the fire, but without proper funding, none of them could get the plans off the ground, and the underground fire was spread by 700 feet. Despite all of this, people continued to live in Centralia, a 12-year-old kid in 1981 fell into a sinkhole which collapsed beneath him in his own backyard, but by some stroke of luck, his cousin was able to save him. As mentioned, the dangerous levels of carbon monoxide was present on the ground, so this sinkhole released more of it into the area. Now discussions began on whether or not the fire underground posed a serious threat to the town, <laughs> but come on. A backyard where a kid was playing and wasn't safe. In 1983, the U.S. Congress used more than $42 million in relocation efforts for the people in Centralia, which most accepted. Hundreds of homes were demolished and by 2010, only five homes remained. The people who decided to stay there all this time for some reason were allowed to do so, but were forbidden from passing down or selling their property there so it could be demolished when they left them. As Centralia exists today, it's a near ghost town joining a long list of abandoned mining towns. But what makes Centralia interesting is the burning hellfire underneath it that's still going to this day. The fire underground is so bad, it extended towards the village of Burnsville. <laughs> yeah, no, ironic name, huh? Which is located a bit south from Centralia. 
It could remain active for another century if left to its own devices, making it one of United States' worst coal fires. If you want to keep the channel going or help fund my upcoming series, you can become a patron. The link is down below and any amount is greatly appreciated. Anyways, I gotta go. Be nice to one another and take care of yourselves.